Uh, good evening, everybody. People are dying for a show here. <laughs> yeah, let the show begin. <laughs> Okay, we will start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Flag right over my shoulder. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Wendy will now read the constable's return. Pursuant to within warrant, I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of Sunderland by posting up attested copies of the same at the town office building, the Sunderland Public Library, and the Sunderland Post Office, seven days at least before the date hereof as within directed. Frederick A. Laurinaitis, April 20th, 2022, at 1.21 p.m. All right, I am uh, Mike Wisman. I'm town moderator. And uh, to my left or right is Wendy Hull. She's town clerk. And this is Tom Vidnikevitz. These are all selectmen. Um, where are we? Crystal Drake. Crystal Drake Trumley and David Pierce, and then Jeff uh, Kravitz. I shouldn't be, if I could do it off the top of my head, I'd be fine. Jeff Kravitz is town uh, administrator, and then David Jenkins keeps us in order. He's town uh, council. All right. This is Sarah, Sim uh, Sarah Simorowski, is chair of finance, and she'll introduce her committee. Okay, and then the school committee, elementary school committee, is uh, Greg Gottschalk. Please stand up and wave to everybody. Thank you. He's the chair. Meg Megan Arquin. There's Megan. Jessica Corwin. Peter Gugarin. And Keith McFarland. And the Frontier School Committee is Keith McFarland. Uh, Judy Pierce, who is her last year on the committee. And uh, Lynn Roberts. Okay. Uh, school administration is Darius Metzto. She's the son, uh, superintendent of Frontier and Elementary. Um, Shelly uh, Horita. Wave. Is Director of Business Services. Ben Barsheski is elementary school principal. And then from the tech school, we have Rick Martin, who is the superintendent of Franklin County. He is not here, apparently. Um, Rick Kubris, business manager from Franklin County Tech. Um, that's it. Okay, so hopefully everybody, when they came in, got the voter packet. And within, in that, you'll see there's the uh, warrant. And then in that, we have our cards. And everybody got to practice the cards when we were outside. So the green would mean yes. The red's no. And then the yellow is if you have a question. OK, and we'll use the yellow when we're going through the budget. We'll go section by section. And if you want to go back and review a section, hold up the yellow card, and we'll make a note and come back to that section when we're done. Um, all right. Uh, the, other, the other thing is, when you have your questions uh, card, make sure that you get somebody to come over with a microphone, because the sound in this uh, gymnasium is not great, especially for those of us up here. Um, it's better than, I think, better than usual. We seems to have a better back speakers, so maybe we'll hear everybody better. But anyway, you have to be clear. Go ahead. Well, you're reading. You're taking my notes. From <laughs> oh, sorry.
last minute update. Okay. Um, okay. I talked about the budget. Um, if, you, if there are amendments, they need to be written and they need to be submitted to Wendy. Um, I also want to thank everybody for putting it. It takes a lot of work to get to where we are. It seems like it's a fairly short warrant this year, but there's a tremendous amount of work goes into that, and the budget planning starts in December almost, so it takes a very long time to get to where we are right now. So a lot of people have put a lot of hard work into this. Um, I want to acknowledge um, Chris Collins passing. He was the director of FCAT, and he passed away last fall, I believe. And uh, John Boshin is now the recently hired director of FCAT. John, you want to, there, John's over there on duty. Um, okay, so the first motion we'll be looking for is, do I have a motion to dispense with the reading of the motions? Second? Okay, everyone in favor of a motion to dispense with the reading of the motions Say aye or hold up your, let's practice the green card. <laughs> if you are opposed, hold up your red card. Yep, that's okay, passed unanimously. Thank you. Okay, now we need another motion to allow school officials, town council, and other town employees permission to speak if they are not registered voters of Sunderland. Do I have a second? All those in favor, green card. Those opposed, red card. Passed unanimously, thank you. That is coming up right now. Okay. Um, okay, Tom, so we're gonna do the uh, town dedication. Okay. Every, every year we have the, uh, the, the, the board puts together a list of uh, individuals for the dedication of the annual report and we go through it. And this year we have a, uh, a dedication of the annual report to Mr. Scott Bergeron. So many, many groups or individuals have been recognized over the years, have served our town in ways that make Sunderland an outstanding place. This year, our annual report is dedicated, as I said earlier, to Mr. Scott Bergeron. Many know Scott as an elected select board member, a seat is held since 2003 until stepping down in 2021. However, his, his town service started in the year 2000 as an elected Riverside Cemetery trustee, a position he still holds today. He served as a finance committee member from 2000 to 2003 before joining the board. Being a select board member once beyond, member goes beyond the Monday meetings or annual town meeting. Select board members participate on many other committees which are, fundamental, which are a fundamental part of our town. Their expertise and vast knowledge of the committees, town goals and vision enhances our growth as a community. Scott has served on many of these committees and organizations throughout his tenure Contribute, contributing to the longevity and consistency of the projects or organization he involved himself in. While the list is long, Scott's contributions are immeasurable. He has served many years on the Permanent Building Committee, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, the Housing Committee, the Sunderland Emergency Preparedness Team. He has also represented the Select Board on the Police Union Negotiation Team. Now, if anybody thinks that's easy, just remember the guys on the other side of the table have guns. Okay, so Scott, you can, if you could give us back the, the vest, we appreciate that. Uh, and, and also served on new co town administrator contract negotiations. As part of the select board obligations, he also served as sewer commissioner and local licensing authority for alcohol licensing. And we are very fortunate to have Scott because not too many select board members can sit down and talk about the fine points of making to clean water. Scott's an expert at doing that, so thank you, Scott. 
Scott was an integral part of the 120 North Main Street Committee that was formed in 2014 for the development of senior housing on town acquired property. While expected to be short term, the committee per persevered and, and they're still serving today to see that the project to completion, which is expected to be the latter part of 2022, hopefully this fall. As a senior housing committee project advanced, the Village Center Committee was formed also with Scott's involvement to focus on how Sunland could enhance its community center for visitors and those traveling through our community, which is also still ongoing. We'd also be remiss to not recognize Scott's generosity and expertise over the years. Scott, we appreciate your continued service to our town and thank you and this dedication is to you. Scott Bergeron. Do you want to give a short speech, Scott? No. Um, no, no. <laughs> um, we also want to know as a memoriam, people who have uh, contributed to the town um, in 2021 have passed on. Um, they contributed their time and expertise. We want to remember Russ Lane, Stanley Mitskoski, uh, Edwin Mogolinski. Edwin Skrubisky and Marianne Utney. Um, and they have all worked in various capacities for the town. And uh, they passed on 2021. All right. Um, I have the power to declare two thirds um, majority. But if anybody questions my hearing, which is not a bad thing to question, or my uh, ability to read the cards, you can take seven people and we can do a vote, in which case the counters who are about to be sworn in will go out and count and confirm or deny my calling. Um, so speaking of tellers, uh, would Liz Sillen, Lauren Starr, Bob Ahern, and Steve Schneider please come forward to be sworn in? There he comes. So with, with that, I think we're ready to start business here. Uh, article one. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move article one. Second. Um, I don't know that there's uh, much to talk about with article one. Any questions on article one? Hold up your question card if you do have a question on article one. Okay, all those in favor of Article 1, hold up your green card, please. Those not in favor, red card, pass unanimously. Okay, Article 2. I motion we move Article 2. Second. Okay, this is like, uh, Article for Compensation for Town Officials. Um, any questions about Article 2? Okay, all those in favor of Article 2, green card, please. Those opposed, red card. Okay, pass unanimously. Okay, Article 3 is the budget. And um, Sarah Snyder is going to, ah, uh, Sarah Snyder. <laughs> Sarah Simorowski is going to do a quick uh, overview of the budget. Oh, hold on. We'll make a motion first. Okay. Motion. Uh, I'd like to move Article 3, please. Second. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Um, I won't get into details. I'll just make a general introduction of the budgeting process and also explain the role of the Finance Committee. Um, I'm the chair of the Finance Committee. Joe is a member of the Finance Committee. 
The task of the Finance Committee is to make recommendations to citizens at town meeting um, regarding the annual budget. So the committee has oversight, I will say not responsibility, but oversight of town financial man uh, matters. And the town moderator appoints all the members of the Finance Committee. Um, the budget process, as you mentioned earlier, starts back in December um, and is usually given guidance from the select board of what level of funding, what level of budget. The guidance that was given at the beginning of this budgeting process was that we should strive for level services from the previous year. Level services does not necessarily mean level funding, as we know cost and wages can, can vary from year to year, so achieving the level services may not necessarily mean level funding. Um, individual departments prepare their own budgets, bring them to the select board meetings, and there's a, a review process that goes on for three months, basically a weekly commitment of gathering the budget together, reviewing it, and looking at it on a top level. Um, I wanna say thank you to everyone sitting at this uh, the table up here, from our town administrator, our town clerk, the select board, the um, administrators of the school and the school committee. Tremendous amount of time and effort goes into the budget process, and it's incredibly important, so thank you for, because many of the members of those committees are volunteers as well. Um, so tonight we will ask the residents to vote on a budget of 9,390,843, which represents a 4.2% increase over last year. And I won't go into the details as they have been included in our packet. Um, my final note is that oversight of the budgets of each department is a crucial part of our local democracy and our town. And, um, so thank you if you are involved in this process and if you would like to be involved in the future, I would highly encourage you to take part, whether in a formal process of becoming a part of a committee or just showing up to the select board meetings and to the budget presentations, but your input is very important in this process. Thank you. Um, we will go through the budget section by section. <clears throat> I'll read off the section and if you have a question, we will uh, come back to it after I've gone through the entire major categories, hold up the question card, we'll mark it down and we'll come back and review it afterwards. All right, so this is starting with uh, general government. Any questions about, everybody have a copy of the budget in their package? All right. So general government, any questions about anything about general government funding? Town buildings, any questions? The police department, okay. The fire department. Uh, total inspectors and other protection. Highway department. Health and sanitation. Library. Elementary school. Franklin Tech assessment. Right. Uh, frontier assessment. Out of district tuition and transport. Total benefits and insurance. Total miscellaneous and reserve fund. Total operating budget, that's just the total of that. Uh, wastewater treatment plant budget. And total debt and interest. All right. So we have total, we have the police department and we have Franklin um, Tech. So what were the questions, who had the questions on the police department? Raise your hand and they'll run over with a mic. There's a mic right there in front of you. Or go up here. Hi, is this working okay? Yep. It All is. Right. 
I'm Kim Laudette, and I have a question about the police department budget going up $10,000 at a time when we should be looking at more social service support for people in our town and dealing with emergencies other than through force and police force, and just wondering why we're going up $10,000, or well, 10% on that line. Uh, I think the chief is here. Thank you. Uh, my name is Eric Dimitropoulos, the police chief here in Sunderland. The 10% increase is between a mixture of uh, payroll increases through the contract, but the main increase is for a sixth full-time officer. We haven't been able to increase the police department staff uh, full-time since I believe it was 2001. So my request this year, as it has been for the past three years, is to increase the full-time police status from five full-time to six. Well, if, if Chief, could you also explain the change? And, and you have a very good question about the increase, but can you explain a little about what, because of um, changes in the law that the state legislators have have proposed? So basically, we're they're, they're, the state legislators are are requiring us to have better trained officers. I think the chief can explain that also. Sure. So Massachusetts has been on the forefront of. Uh, policing and really going forward and trying to show that police officers need to be certified. And then recently, they ca they completed the POST system, the Peace Officer Standards and Training, and they're requiring all police officers to become certified, and our part-time staff, as well as about 60 part-time employees in Franklin County, have had to attend a bridge academy. That bridge academy is 200 hours for each officer. 80 hours online and 120 hours of in-person, and they broke it down into different scenarios. A lot of times what's been happening with the part-time, um, they've also reduced and stopped doing the part-time police academy. So where there's no more part-time police academy, there's gonna be no more part-time officers to uh, pick from, from a pool. So having a full-time certified officer added to the ranks would also assist with the increase in calls that we've had steadily for the past 20 years and I ended up giving that to the select board um, when we initially did the budget request. The peace officer standards of training, um, they, you may have seen some of the stuff online, they call them post, and that post system <coughs> makes sure that each officer goes through uh, not just the full-time training, but any other legal updates and any other uh, information that officers need to deal with when dealing with uh, members of the public, motor vehicle enforcement, and criminal law updates. Uh, since then, we have, right now we have eight part-time officers. Out of those eight, four of them have to go through this year, and then we have the remainder going through the next two years. I believe that in time, we're gonna be seeing the part-time ranks going away, and we're only gonna have full-time. We have a department, and we have a small enough town, where we don't have some of the, I guess, frequency of calls at say Greenfield or Amherst or Springfield. We do have some of the same calls, just not at the same frequency. But as we've been seeing the call volume increase with the same amount of staff that we've had, I felt that the, and like I said, for the past three years, we've been trying to uh, get this information and get the uh, uh, extra police officer. We need to be able to provide more of a service to the town. The town needs to have a level of law enforcement that it wants and it demands and the officers are gonna to continue to con uh, go through the trainings that they have been going through, but all the new trainings. We're also gonna be trying to partner with different um, groups similar to CSO out of Greenfield to offer different services to the, the community at, that we live in. Uh, that hopefully will be coming in the form of a grant. So that, will, that increase will be paid for by the grant, but not this. This increase is just for um, the few thousand dollars is coming for like all the uh, contract negotiations and all the upgrades, but the in initial implementation of having that sixth officer will help reduce wait times and allow the department to still serve the community because the community demands a certain type of level of policing. And we want to make sure that we continue to do that. Thank you, Chief. 
Okay, thank you. All right, and then we had another question on the Franklin County Tech Assessment. You had more questions on the police. Oh, is there another question on the police? Yes, sorry. I just wanted to clarify, um, are we still having eight part-time officers and adding a full-time officer, or are we going down to seven part-time officers and adding a full-time officer? Sort of seems like with an increase of that size, uh, we could make a little bit less of a 10% increase if we did one less part-time and added the full-time, which would still be an overall increase in, in man hours, but less of a, a hit on the budget. Thank you. Another great question. So the part-time officers right now, what they do is they supplement on either, uh, right now, three shifts a week. On top of that, they also do all the benefit time. So the full-time employees do get time off sick halls, uh, vacation times, personal days, things like that. We do believe that um, after July, we will be going down to seven, and, but that's not with the uh, potential increase if it's approved. We are uh, believing that if we have the ability to, and as long as a part-time officer is certified through post, we might be able to then use that officer in the full-time ranks, but I can't say that that extra officer, I'm sorry, one of the part-time officers could become full-time because we have to make sure that they're certified. If they're not certified, then they're not gonna be employed by us after July 1st. So as of right now, we have eight. I can tell you that after July, we'll have seven, and we may be able to then promote one of the part-timers up to full-time, and then that will reduce it down to six. And we are hoping with this full-time position, it will take the place of at least one of those three part-time shifts, maybe even two, and then that will help. We still need some of the, the leftover six part-timers to fill in all of the openings for sick call-outs and vacation times. So, so, and if I could just add to that, so in, in addition to that, the part-time police wages have been reduced by about approximately $6,200 and also police department overtime has been reduced about $2,700. So there has, been, there has been savings on there. What, we, when, what, what the board asked the chief was to present us with a, a projected schedule so, to show us what, what, the new, what, the, what the new manning schedule would look like with, with additional officers. And the chief was able to do that. And while he wasn't, while he weren't able to take total part-time officers out of it. We we're, we're, like I said, we were able to reduce by that by about 6,200 and another $1,500 or so out from overtime as well. Okay, thank you, Chief. All right, were there any other questions on the police department? All right, now we'll do the Franklin County tech assessment. Th thank you, Mr. Moderator. And, and, and a lot of times we like to speak upon why why there's big increases or big decreases and that comes from the town to town clerk when we look at her budget sometimes it, it's pretty much mirrors of national and state elections franklin county school versus our elementary and frontier is it's basically an assessment and it's based on the number of students that are going to the franklin county tech this year, we're going down by a couple students, so we have a $40,000 reduction. One of the concerns that we have is that, and when we look at the regional district with Frontier, it's kind of melt, you know, evened out over a five-year period. This is not. This is, you know, what happens, what happens. And so this year, if we're down 26%, we could just as easily go up 40% next year. So we just like to bring that everybody's attention that, that that's one thing that helped with the budget this year is a significant decrease in Franklin Tech. Thank okay, you, thanks. Monitor. Thanks, Tom. Uh, were there any other questions in general? Otherwise, we're ready to vote the budget. All right. So um, we're looking for. Uh, a budget, it's $9,390,843. All those in favor of Article 3, raise a green card, please. Those opposed, a red card. Okay, declared unanimous. Thank you. Okay, Article 4. 
Mr. Moderator, like to move Article 4, please? Got a second? Oh, a second. I know. <laughs> I was reading. It's a tough job if somebody's got it. It is. Um, all right. Um, I believe the, this wants that you want to amend this, correct? Yeah. So I'd like to move that the article be amended to remove the glycol sprinkler replacement project from the capital budget and reduce the transfer from capital, capital stabilization funds by $13,800 from $101,306.48 to $87,506.48 uh, because there's no longer the glycol system in there. So, so we need to vote on the amendment. Um, and with the amendment, it would be the total uh, recommended capital and sewer reserve number would be 112, 506, 48. Um, so the first thing we'll do uh, is uh, voting on removing the glycol sprinkler replacement um, system. Do you need a second on your motion? Yep, we do. Thank you. Okay, so all those in favor of the motion, given by David, green card, please. Those opposed, red card. Okay, thank you. And this is a stabilization um, transfer, so this requires a two-thirds vote. So the new number is 112, 506, 48. So all those in favor of Article 4 as amended, have a green card, please. Those opposed, red card. Okay, declared unanimous, thank you. Article 5. I motion we move Article 5. Second. Oh, <laughs> we got that. Yeah. <laughs> got a little too close. Speaking um, up for my lacking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tom, you want to talk about this? When we, when we were looking at the budget, we, we, at the, we, there was a thought that we would have to use free cash to uh, pay for Article 5, 6, and 7. If, if you know, we are going to ask to withdraw these articles, but Article 5 in particular, it's $34,000 for um, the pay, payment of retirement for an elementary school uh, employee, a teacher. What we can expect over the next week, we ask the schools to, to look at what's going to happen over the next five or ten years with this. Is it is it going to continue? And they came out, and, and, and again, retirement's a pretty personal thing for mo most of us know. It's a pretty personal thing. So while we can't, we can't, they can't ask any specific individual that are actually going to retire, they, they looked at their, the years of service and the age, and, and they, they kind of telling us that we're going to probably be seeing similar numbers for the next five to ten years with people retiring. This year, we're going to be taking the money out of ARPA money, and that'll be voted on by the Board of Selectmen at a later date, but we will probably be seeing, and this is another thing that we want everyone to be aware of, is that we'll be probably seeing similar numbers on the warrant for the next five to ten years. So that's money that we're probably going to have to start planning on thirty, forty thousand dollars to pay these things. So we just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention, so that when we look at these numbers next year, we'll have an we'll have an idea why why it's there and where it's coming from. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. So do you at, want to talk to these individuals, make a withdrawal, or do you want to talk about all the ones? And, and the, the other ones, Article 6 was for the membership in the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control Board uh, or district. We, last year we joined, we were able to join with a 3,000. Senior, senior Center. Yeah, sorry. Senior yes. Center 6. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the 6 is Senior Center. The uh, Senior Center, uh, what? It's a phase two of the assessment, and this is a shared, Sunland pays 25, Whaley 25, and Deerfield 
so that we're, we're going to continue the assessment of what our seniors are looking to do and the facilities that house them. And Article 7 is the 5,000 for the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. And we think that going forward last year, we know that we did not have any mosquitoes with West Nile and or Triple E that were serviced. Um, there, it, at some point, it's going to come to a, a head, and you're going to be reading more about it with from the state when they offer spraying and as it was, we, we believe having documented data as to where the mosquitoes, what they, if we see Triple E or West Nile or any other thing, it's very important information that we can share with the state and maybe ward off anything that comes that we don't agree with. So that's, that's why we, we're, we want to continue with the, uh, the mosquito district. And we'll be taking that out of our for money also. And we will tell why, because it's there's an article coming up that where we're going to use free cash because we have to pay. It's a bookkeeping. It's a bookkeeping thing that Jeff can explain much better than I can. So at this time, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to withdraw. Or we'll do them one at a time. So go back to Article Five. Yeah, Article Five, please. Okay, we, we need no second on this. It's not debatable, but it does need a majority vote. So all those in favor of withdrawing Article 5, green card, please. All those opposed, red card. Okay, uh, passed unanimously. Article 6, please. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 6. I'd like second. to withdraw. And, do I do it? How do I do it? Or second it. I did a second. second. Okay. No, you, just, you need to. You want to withdraw articles. Oh, I, I thought we were going down the line. But so I'll do, I'll do six. Like withdraw article. Withdraw six. article six. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so we're going to withdraw article six. All those in favor of withdrawing article six, vote oh, yes. Green card. Those opposed. Red card. Pass unanimously. Thank you. No, Lastly, seven. article seven. Yeah. I motion we withdraw article seven. Okay. All those. In favor of withdrawing Article 7, green card. Opposed, red card. Passed unanimously. Thank you. Okay, we're on to Article 8. Oh, I motion we move Article 8. Second. All right, do you want to discuss? Um... David, do you want to do capital? This is for the um, replacement of a walk-in cooler at Frontier Regional School District. I don't know if, um, do, do, do you have anything you want to, there's probably not a lot to mention, but it's to replace the walk-in. <laughs> 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 so Keeps put, things cold. Yep, okay. exactly. It's like a large, <laughs> yep, it's a, basically like when your refrigerator dies at home. That's pretty much what it is. And this is someone's share of that cost. Yes. Okay. Any any questions on Article Eight? Okay. All those in favor of Article Eight, this needs a two-thirds vote. Green card, please. Those opposed, red card. Passed unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Article Nine. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article Nine. Second. Is there any discussion as to this is moving money around article? Oh, we have a question. Will, microphone, please. Will still in South Main Street. So with the removal of the other articles, it looks like the free cash is going to be about $150,000 after this article, should it pass. And I'm wondering, maybe it's the Finance Committee or the Select Board, $9 million budget, what is the what is the range that we should have for free cash? What does the state like to see? Uh, what's a, is there an alarm for too little free cash? And, you know, too much? What's the, what, how's $150,000 sound for free cash for a $9 million budget, I guess is the question. Yeah, so um, I think free cash, I, I have it at about 120,000 after all the articles. Um, which is about one and a half percent of the operating budget. <clears throat> Typically, cash reserves, the state recommends three to five percent. So 
free cash plus stabilization, um, which is going to be um, stabilization is three hundred and sixty-eight thousand five hundred. Um, so the total would be four hundred and eighty-nine thousand one hundred sixty-three between those two funds, which is about five and a half percent of the operating budget. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions on Article 9? Okay, all those in uh, favor of Article 9, green card, please. Anyone opposed? Red card. Passed unanimously. Thank you. Okay, Article 10. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 10, please. I second. Um, I don't know who someone want to address, Lauren or uh, Jennifer. Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer, you were chosen. Yeah. Megan, you can get up there together. This is for the project that the CPA process has recommended to bring to town meeting, and it is might seem like a duplicate to last year, because we did authorize 20,000 for the same restroom project to support the park grant. But as many of you probably know, all the costs of everything have gone up since we got going on that project. So that money won't be spent for that particular project. And this is now the new cost of renovating the restrooms and not really getting park grant help with that anymore because all of that went to the rest of the park grant pieces. I don't know if Jeff wants to add anything more to that or Megan. That's pretty much it. Yeah, no, it, it, the design for the restrooms have been done as part of the overall plan. So this is just to implement those designs uh, exactly as Jennifer said. Any, any questions on this article? Any questions on the article? All right, all of those in favor of Article 10, green card, please. Anyone opposed to red card? Okay, pass unanimously. Thank you. Article 11. I motion we move Article 11. Second. Jennifer, <laughs> you sat down too fast. This is another CPA project approved by the, not approved, but recommended from the CPA to bring to town meeting to authorize a transfer of money from the CPA funds, $100,000 to go to the Conservation Trust, which would be only used for um, either conservation restrictions or land preservation. It's typically been used for agricultural preservation restriction, APR, but this would be, could be other not just APR, why we did want to make sure that was clear. Um, that's, but it's still conservation related purchases or easements. Mr. Moderator, if I may please. Um, at this time I'd like Megan to stand up. <laughs> May, just so, May, Megan, Megan, Megan is a chair of the CPA. Megan became the chair because she couldn't get on the Zoom and we voted her the chair before she had an offer. Um, Ma Megan, Megan came with very little experience and over the last, last two years, Ma Megan has done an outstanding job and I'd just like to recognize her, her work because as any of us that have been on a committee know, a, a committee really goes by the way of its chair and, committee, and our committee has been very, very fortunate to have Megan as our chair. All right, with that said, is there any other questions on Article 11? All right, we'll vote Article 11 now. Those in favor of Article 11, a green card, please. Anyone opposed, a red card? Okay, it passed unanimously also, thank you. Article 12. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 12. Second. This is a uh, housekeeping 
piece for this CPC um, or the Community Preservation Fund. Why don't you give a quick? Jennifer is the guru of the whole the funding apparatus for the community uh, community preservation is no no crazy thank, crazy. Thank you, moderator. It takes a team. <laughs> I'm just the treasurer. No, it doesn't. It takes you. That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did want to. Um, this is my chance to say that we're a million dollar town. Um, so we have over a million dollars in the CPA funds, and we have a forum this Wednesday to review our priorities and goals for future funding and projects at 6.45 p.m. at town offices this Wednesday. And we have funded over a million dollars in projects, and we have gotten 100% match from the state, which means we've gotten a million dollars from the state. As, as funding all those projects. I mean, we did get another 100% match this past year. Um, so this is- And how many other towns in the state got 100%? I forget that total, but it's under 10. Under 10, yeah. Yeah. So needless to say, this is a housekeeping piece of this. We have to allocate certain amounts of money to each, each fund. Um, Historical preservation, community housing, and uh, uh, CPA, the open space. Um, and then the rest of the money is put into uh, undesignated budgeted reserve. So this is basically kind of a housekeeping piece. So any questions on Article 12? Hollis, we're not ready for that yet. <laughs> okay, now we'll vote Article 12. Those in favor, green card, please. Anyone opposed, red card? <laughs> Thank you, unanimous. Article 13. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to uh, move Article 13, please. Second. Um, Article 13 is basically funding for all of our inspectors um, and fees. I don't know if there's any questions on that. Any need for explanation? All right, I think we're ready to vote Article 13. All those in favor of Article 13, green card. Anyone opposed? Red card, please. Okay, unanimous. You guys are batting 1,000 here today. Okay, Ar Article 14. I motion we move Article 14. Second. Okay, do you have some discussion on Article 14? Some um, explanation? Okay. Personal. Who's our All right. personnel person? So this is basically to do away with the names. They can still be called that name. We're not saying that we're not going to refer to November 11th any longer as Veterans Day. It's though to keep it more general so that if names of holidays change, new holidays are added, we don't have to pay the fees to have the bylaws changed. We can just adopt what the state does with that holiday. Mr. Moderator, if I may, please, the select oh, board. And also, I'm sorry, it does, it adds June, in this article, we're adding Juneteenth to that list of the paid holidays. Mr. Moderator, it, the select board voted 2 1. I, I was the dissent. I, I don't have a, philosophically, I don't have a problem with the intent of saving the town money, approximately two to $400 on, on what the costs of reprinting are. But I do have a, a problem with eliminating these identification of the holidays in, in our bylaws. For instance, many of us that went to the old Sunland Grammar School remember that President's Day was actually two holidays. It was Washington's birthday and Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Um, now it's, it became President's Day and, and, and it was for a good reason. Martin Luther's King Day should be remembered as Martin Luther's King Day, not as a day off, in my opinion. I, I think it should be written. I think that he was a, 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 an amazing man. I think Memorial Day should be remembered as Memorial Day, not a day off. For, and remembering that Memorial Day is a representation or for us to remember our veterans that did not come home. 
I think it should be remembered as Memorial Day and, and recorded in books and as days off and announcements in our select board meetings. I say have the same thing for Veterans Day. And I, I may be, and, and I just may be singular in my beliefs, but I, I think we represent many great reasons for having these holidays and those meetings shouldn't be forgotten. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Anything else, anyone else want to comment on Article 14? Stuart? Just a question to you, Mr. Moderator. Um, given Mr. Fighting Kevin's point, how, what is the proper method of splitting this motion so that we could add Juneteenth, but do away with the rest? Well, you want to add Ju Juneteenth to this list yes. and keep the list. I think we have to vote on the articles presented, um, unless you want to, I guess we could amend it to include. We could. I, I would say what we'd have to do is we would just have to include uh, Stu. So we just have to make a motion to include June 19th. Um, June, and, and hand it to, and we vote on that. We'd vote on that amendment. Put it on a list, and then we would still vote the article as to whether we go with the state. And right. so we can do that. Somebody, if somebody wants to do that, will. Microphone, please. Okay. We're deaf up here. Now I'm confused. Uh, so. What's struck through is what currently exists, right? So Juneteenth yes. isn't on the current list. No, it's not. So uh, it's we're not talking about adding if, it to this if, list if, and then striking we, it out. If, if, you, if, you, if you maintain the names of the holidays, uh -huh. the, we also have, if you, uh, the, the, if you look right under and insert, it says all holidays enumerated by Mass General Law. Yeah. So because June 19th is a, a state holiday now, it would be added to that list. Okay, okay. Um, so I, I personally don't think that we would have to do anything. Um, just we, yeah. If, we, I mean, so the point of the, of the article is, is that, uh, that we will be, we will be consistent with all the other towns that every other holidays, the, what everybody else is taking off and that will include Juneteenth. Correct? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, if we're going to keep this list, uh, there, I think there's a couple of typos. So I don't know if that's on the article or... I, 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 think, I think the town clerk would take care of it when she okay. looks at the... Uh... Okay. So, I, so now, I, now I'm confused. Um, so I... <laughs> so I Wendy wants to talk. Thank you. Um, just a little history on this. What was happening is, I mean, it's just like a housekeeping in how town hall runs. And June um, teenth came in in June. There was nothing the town could do if they wanted to acknowledge that. Um, the same thing with changing a name and things coming off and, and added on. It, it just makes the running of town hall smoother. I will say the select board every December votes the holidays that the, the town and the dates are going to apply. So the last Monday in uh, May is Memorial Day. So uh, my, I see nothing wrong with keeping that tradition up so that you're putting the names that you want on there, um, but it does give flexibility throughout the year with something coming up. And, you know, yes, I've worked here for 24 years. It's never been a huge deal, but it, boy, it seemed like this year it was. And if we can just make something go smoother without a town meeting um, that isn't crucial to the way the town is running, I. I I think it's a cleaner way to go. Does anybody else have anything to add?
Um, one more question. Lauren, step up. I mean, I just looked up the section with uh, Clause 18 in the state, in the, in the Mass General Laws. And to Tom's point, the legal holidays are all listed there, some by date and some by name. So it's not, it's not totally consistent, but it get, it, they're all there. So I, so I guess the question is, if this is voted down and Juneteenth is not on this list, does that need to be voted in by you guys to make it a holiday? Well, if, no, we could, uh, and, and to Wendy's point, we do vote separately every year the list of holidays. Right. And so, so you, would just, you would just update that at the time. Right. Okay. This behind the scenes keeps things smoother. And everything. Okay. So I think we're actually ready to vote this, unless anyone has anything to add. We're voting on the article. We're voting on the articles presented. So, in a nutshell, what this does is it basically says we're going to instead of listing and renaming the holidays ourselves, and then having to republish when there are changes, we're going to say whatever the state says are the holidays, we follow that list and that rule. Well, it's not changing the name yeah, of nobody, anything. Yeah, it's not changing the name of anything. It's yeah. just using a different, it's instead of using the booklet to list the holidays, it's looking at Mass General Law to list the holidays. That's the only, we're not taking the name of anything away. All right? All right, everybody get that? If I get it, you should be able to get it, but. <laughs> Randy, I don't I'm right next to these guys. I don't, anyway. agree. I don't agree with that. The, the, well, how is it defined that's okay. in law? That's okay. I, I don't care. I don't. Well, we're, okay, that's okay. We're, we're gonna vote the article. <laughs> All those in favor of Article 14, a green card, please. All those opposed, a red card. Passed by majority. Okay. Whew. Oops. I got it, Michael. Thank you. All right, this is what you've all been waiting for. It's the consent articles. Um, articles 15 through 20, and we usually vote them as a block. They're mainly housekeeping articles. They allow officials to conduct business for the town. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move articles 15 through 22 or 20? 20. 20. Do we have a second? Second. Question, Peter. Uh, Peter Gagarin in North Main Street. I'll say this quickly so you don't stop me, Mike. The acoustics this evening are wonderful. Yes. Okay, part yes. of having a good town meeting is being able to understand each other. And this is so much better, and I don't know who did it, and maybe someone can tell us. I get it's here. It's thank here you notes. very, very much. Dogwood Audio. Dogwood Audio. Where's Mr. Dogwood? There they are, right there. Yeah. I, I'll agree. We haven't looked as dumb as usual up here because we can hear. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in favor of anything that helps us out. Speak for, speak for yourself. Speak for myself. Okay. Anyway, thank you for that, Peter. I'm glad you guys can hear because we certainly can hear much better up here. Okay, back to where we were. Um, we have a motion and second in on articles 15 through 20, the consent articles. All those in favor of 15 through 20, a green card, please. Anyone opposed, a red card. Passed unanimously, thank you. And there's only yet but one thing left to do. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to make a motion to dissolve. No. Oh, no, no. Two, two things. Here, Wendy. You are hereby directed to warn the inhabitants of said Sunderland qualified to vote in the town elections to bring in and cast their votes for the following offices to be filled for the year 2022 on Saturday, the 7th of May at the Sunderland Elementary School, I mean, I'm sorry, Sunderland Public Library from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Moderator, select board, 
assessor, Board of Health, Riverside Cemetery, planning board, library trustee, three for three years, and library trustee, one for one year, elementary school committee, frontier regional school committee, town clerk, and town park trustee. And I think the last thing is this is Mike's last year as moderator. For a town clerk, he's been great. Please remember to vote next week, okay? All right, Tom, you're on. I make a motion to dissolve. I and it's second. okay with the town clerk. Yep. Oh, I guess I'll second. All in favor of disillusion then. Disillusion. <laughs> Anyone opposed? Thank you.